Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. Welcome to Observing with Webb for January of 2018, where a high school astronomy teacher tells you what you're looking at, why it's so cool, and what you should check out each month at night. Uh, don't forget to check out my Podbean page, uh, mrweb.podbean.com. Uh, my Twitter feed is mrwebpv, and my YouTube channel is also mrwebpv. <clears throat> and you can get my podcast, my audio podcast, on Stitcher or iTunes. Now, January 2018, it's going to be a... Uh, Month for the mornings, and a month for the mornings for the planets. Uh, we've got Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn all making uh, appearances. So each naked eye one except for Venus. We also have conjunctions of two different pairs of these planets. And the moon will pass by each of these planets. It will be full twice in the month, and it will be eclipsed by the Earth's shadow. Uh, but only visible in a certain spots. Uh, so, but I'll get to that soon. So let's... Uh, quickly move on to the planet. So we're set up for January 1st, right after sunset, and you see no naked eye planets. Yes, there's Neptune and Uranus, but hmm, those are those you need a telescope for. Let's let's take a look here. Uh, you'll see the moon. Yeah, it says the Earth's shadow, but we'll ignore that for now. Um, the moon's full pretty much on the first. That's pretty cool. Uh, but now you have to keep going into the morning to actually see something. So let's move forward a little bit. See, there we go. Oh, there we go. We've got Mars and Jupiter. So let's talk about these planets. You're not going to see any at sunset. You're not going to see any throughout the night. The earliest you're really going to see anything might be around 3.30. Okay, so let's talk about Mars and Jupiter for a little bit. Okay, Jupiter is rising about 3 a.m. Uh, in early January and about 2 a.m. in late January. And um, it'll be about 30 degrees above the southern horizon uh, by morning. In fact, let me go to sunrise and you'll see there it is pretty high above the sky. And Mars will be in there as well. Uh, Mars is rising at about the same time as Jupiter. It's dimmer. It's about 30 degrees high at 7 a.m. It rises about 3 a.m. And you just have to look southeast or east-southeast to find the uh, red object that's pretty close to Jupiter. And also moving through Libra towards Scorpius. In fact, let's, uh, let's go a little fast forward here. If this is the first of the month, let's fast forward a little bit. And you'll see that Mars actually passes by Jupiter through Libra. And Jupiter just slowly passes through. Okay. And by the 31st, Mars is actually pretty close to Scorpius. Okay. Uh, but let's go back to the first of the month. And let's go a little bit earlier in the morning. Ah, here we go. You start seeing Mercury. Okay. Now, Mercury is at its greatest elongation in the beginning of the month, and you can see it for about two weeks. That's about it. That's all you got. Because watch what happens as we go through the days. Mercury is going to drop a little bit lower and then Saturn is actually going to come into play and start rising as Mercury fades away. So you've got the first half of the month is for Mercury, second half is more for Saturn. They're still both pretty difficult to see. They're going to be very low on the horizon. Uh, and in fact, Saturn, it's going to rise... Um, well, about 5.30 at the end of the month, at the best part of the month, to check it out. And it'll only be about 15 degrees high at sunrise. So, check it out. It's out there. Now, you may have noticed that, if I back up, the uh, two planets, Mercury and Saturn, actually get really close together. I'll get to that in a little bit. And also, you may have noticed that Mars and Jupiter actually pass each other. I'll get to that in a little bit as well. But for the planets, just know in the morning, you've got Mars, Jupiter, Mercury, and Saturn. So what other stuff is happening? Well, we've got a full moon on January 1st. That means it's visible uh, throughout the entire night. Uh, and it's going to actually be a supermoon. If you actually watch this before it occurs, which might happen tonight. We never know with editing. Uh, but anyway, the only thing that a supermoon is, is the moon is just a little bit bigger uh, because it's a little closer in its orbit to the Earth uh, because its orbit is elliptical. And it just so happens that that closest approach this time happened at the same time as the full moon. So just a coincidence. 
Um, some people say it's only the only difference is really between a 13 inch pizza pie and a 13.1 inch pizza pie, but still cool. Anyway, uh, should look pretty good. So now nothing really is going to happen, uh, especially until the morning. In fact, let's go toward the morning to the 6th and the 7th of January. And oop, let's focus in on Mars and Jupiter and you'll see what happens. 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. Right, so let's zoom in a little bit more. So if you have a telescope and you can see a one degree field of view, you'll be able to find Mars and Jupiter in that same field of view two mornings in a row. That's within half a degree of each other. And so on the 6th, Mars is to the right of Jupiter. And on the 7th, Mars is a little bit below. Uh, it's just perspective, really. Um, but what, what you're also going to see is on that same night, if I can zoom out, Jupiter and Mars will be right in there. The moon is up and to the right. And on the 8th of January is when the moon will be a third quarter, which means the left half is lit up and you can see it from about midnight and into the morning. But what's really uh, a little more interesting is that the 9th, 10th, and the 11th, they get closer and closer. And on the 11th, you'll notice that the moon, Jupiter, and Mars are all within about five degrees of each other. In fact, I can put them all in a five degree circle with Jupiter off to the right, Mars off to the right and down a little bit as well. So you've got a really cool conjunction here of the Moon, Mars, and Jupiter. Now, if you've been paying attention, you've noticed that the Moon has been moving along the ecliptic um, toward Mercury and Saturn in the end. And so what you'll notice is on the 11th, it's near Jupiter and Mars, but then it's a little closer on the 12th, 13th, and the 14th and the 15th are when they actually get pretty close together. So it is going to be in the morning, uh, right in the dawn, so it's going to be hard to see, but you'll see a very thin crescent moon up there, and Saturn and Mercury will be down and to the left on the morning of the 14th. And then on the morning of the 15th, you'll see that they make a nice triangle here, except that moon is going to be super thin, uh, super hard to see, so binoculars and or a telescope will really help you out to find these on the morning of January the 15th. Now you notice it's very close to being a new moon and that's because on the 16th you have a new moon and it's the darkest skies. So that means we have to switch over to the sunset sky off in the west and you notice the ecliptic is a little different and then what we'll notice is over the next week the moon starts getting more thicker, more thicker? thicker uh, and higher in the sky as it becomes a first quarter moon on the 24th which means you can see it from sunset until about midnight uh, and then really nothing else happens until the full moon on the 31st so here we are on january 31st in the morning you'll see the moon is setting over here and i've labeled the earth's shadow up here and so what's going to happen unfortunately for us on the east coast is the moon is going to get just right on that edge of the Earth's shadow. The, the inner part, this is the umbra, that's the dark part where you actually see the eclipse right around morning, and it's going to be gone and out of sight. Now, I'm not going to show it on here, but if you go further west, like in the Midwest, this will happen, uh, it'll actually go into the shadow a little bit earlier, uh, and you'll be able to see at least the part of the partial eclipse. And if you live on the West Coast, you should be able to see just about the whole thing. Um, but if you really want the best experience, go somewhere out in the Pacific Ocean. Um, but Australia is a good place. China is a good place as well. Uh, but that's it for the events for this month. Uh, let's talk about the constellations pretty quick. Are there Straight up constellations. What are you going to see when you look straight up? Well, if you're looking after sunset, you uh, should be able to find Perseus over here, uh, Taurus off to the side as well, uh, and Auriga up here. This is uh, about 8 p.m. This is looking, uh, the zenith is that little red part right there. Uh, so that's what you're going to be able to see then. Now, if you go a little bit later, you'll see Auriga passes by, uh, and then around midnight, uh, Gemini is pretty much the one as close to the middle as you can. Uh, maybe Auriga and Gemini together, you could say, make up the 
right up, straight up above you, sky. And then as you get closer to the morning, you start seeing Cancer, Leo, uh, and Leo Minor. And you start seeing uh, right about there, you got booties coming in. That's one of the spring constellations saying, hey, spring's coming up somewhat soon, although you can't really tell. But uh, that's if you look straight up, which I don't recommend because it's very easy to get thrown around. Uh, so let's take a look at sunset on January 15th and let's go a little bit deeper than sunset. Let's go about seven o'clock. <clears throat> okay. What can you see around seven o'clock? Well, you've got some nice winter constellations here, uh, with Orion. Now, uh, this one, Orion is pretty easy to find. You can see the belt stars, the three stars that make up the belt and, uh, it's surrounded by four bright stars that make an almost rectangle around it. I think it looks more like a bow tie, but everybody looks at it as a belt. And depending on the time of the night you're looking, it could be oriented up and down or left and right. So let's say, uh, let's say we want to use Orion to help us out here and find some stars. Uh, in fact, let me go a little bit later. Let me go to 8 o'clock just to make it a little more noticeable here. Uh, now what you notice is Orion has this belt of stars. So what you do is you take this belt and you draw a little line between them. Okay. And then you end up going off to the right and you find the new bright star about 20 degrees away. That's Aldebaran in Taurus. So if you just hold your arms out and you just go, okay, there are three stars. One, two, three stars are here. Aldebaran should be right about there. Okay. And then if you go even a little bit further, you'll be able to find the Pleiades. So if you start at the bottom, go to the right or top, go through another 20 degrees, you should be able to find the Pleiades, the seven sisters up here. Okay. Now, if you go the opposite direction, go back to the belt, but go down, you can find Canis Major, the big dog, which has the brightest star in the sky known as Sirius. It's the brightest star in the sky, negative 1.47. That's actually good. Um, and it's pretty easy to find. It's the brightest thing out there. Uh, now, the other thing you can do is sort of make a circle with some of these bright stars. What you can do is start at Aldebaran over here, and you can find Deborah, Aldebaran, which is the brightest star in Taurus, and you can go down and find Rigel, one of the bright stars in Orion down here, it's bottom right knee. Then you could go down to the left to find Sirius and Canis Major. Go to the left and up a little bit, you'll find Procyon, the brightest star in Canis Minor. Go up a bit and you'll find Pollux and Castor, the two brightest stars in Gemini, the twins. And then up and to the right, you'll see Capella, which is a bright star in Auriga. And then you come back down to Taurus and you get this really cool circle or oval in the night sky, which makes up the winter constellations. Uh, but other than that, I think that's a really good look at the winter sky. Uh, I know it's been super cold here. In fact, it was negative six overnight in Lancaster County, which is, wow, almost unheard of. And uh, yeah, so really, I'd just like to wish all of you very clear, dark and not so freezing cold skies for the rest of the month.